This lecture has been made available to you courtesy right. of the American today, Numismatic Society. Uh, we have Annalisa Pelosa, who is a uh, good friend of ours here at the Numismatic Society, good friend of uh, some of us individually, and uh, um, somebody who I haven't seen in a while uh, in person, but will in a couple of weeks, and I'm very excited to see her again. Um, uh, Annalisa is a professor of ancient numismatics at the University of Rome, Sapienza, and before coming to Sapienza, in 2016, she taught at the University of Siena and at the University of Reggio Calabria, Mediterranea. Um, she has been supervising excavations all over the Mediterranean, from southern Italy at Sibara to Greece at Hephaestia, Lemnos, Itanos, and Gortina in Crete, and also in North Africa and Morocco. Um, and since 2015, she has been the director of the excavations in Turkey at uh, Eliusa Sebaste. And in fact, today she's going to be talking to us about the coins, uh, excavation coin finds and the mints at um, Eliusa Sebaste. Um, she has widely published on a variety of subjects, ranging from numismatic materials, from archaeological excavations, all around the Mediterranean, two publications of numismatic collections in Southern Italian museums and Florence, and has also published on epigraphical attestations of coinage, um, as well as metrological and epigraphic surveys of Athenian and Cilician coinages. So um, quite an um, extensive um, uh, publication record and excavation record as well. And with that, Annalisa, I'm more than happy to turn it over to you. So welcome. Thank you so much, Peter. Uh, you probably exaggerated uh, in presenting me, but thank you so much for inviting me, uh, you and all the ANS. Uh, I am very grateful to have the chance to talk about the uh, topic I chose today, uh, which is uh, the coin production, coin circulation in uh, Elagiusa Sebaste, um, where uh, my university, Sapienza, conducted uh, uh, excavation since uh, 1995. And uh, we brought to light several uh, uh, monumental complexes uh, spread around a very wide area and so I will not talk only about coins, but also about the provenance of coins. And um, um, <clears throat> yes, those coins will be more ugly than the ones you normally deal with. But uh, however, it's a different point of view. And I will do some complaints about how, how ugly the coins are instead of uh, magnifying the beauty of uh, ancient coins. Uh, but however, that's what's going on today. And uh, so originally the, 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 the town was born on that small island very close to the coast. Later, uh, the uprising of the coast in that region uh, determined the, um, the fact that it became a, a promontory linked to the, to the mainland. And the site is in Cilicia Trachea, which is the very narrow coast um, to the west of uh, Plain Cilicia. And it's characterized by a very uh, how could I say um, high concentration of small towns uh, built on the on the shore of the eastern Mediterranean, as you see at one side of the Gulf of uh, Issus and uh, Alexandretta. Um, we know about the city that uh, it was. Uh, um, it was probably built already in the second century BC. Uh, we will see later that it depends on archaeological founts, fa finds, but uh, 
it first appears in literary sources when it, uh, literary sources said that it was given to Archelaus of Cappadocia, who changed its name into Sebaste. Before that, we have no idea on the of the life of the of the city. And as many coastal shores in all around the Mediterranean, it was almost completely abandoned about the middle of the seventh century current era. And so I will start by showing some highlights of the archaeological remains. Uh, as confines for us archaeologists talk according to their provenance and uh, as excavation yielded a series of monumental complexes developing both on the rocky promontory, which was the original core of the ancient city, flanked by two harbors, and on the mainland facing the promontory. Uh, as coins have been found everywhere, uh, have they have different meanings being sometimes related to the lifespan of the buildings they were where they came from, and sometimes to the fillings due to the functional transformations. On the mainland, we excavated the public area, including a theater and an agora. And to be more precise, we should say that this was a macellum, which means a commercial marketplace. Uh, in Roman imperial times. Originally, those buildings were flanked by a huge thermal building. But now <clears throat> we see the shape the area gained when it was transformed into a sacred one through the construction of uh, Christian basilicas, both on the Agora and on the, ba the Baths. Uh, excavations show that in an earlier phase, that space was probably occupied by uh, suburban residences, very rich suburban residences, and by some tombs in the necropolis excavated into the rock bank. So now this is the shape that the old uh, thermal baths have with a huge uh, Christian basilica. Uh, these are the mosaics from the uh, suburban residences. And those are the burial graves from one of the tombs we excavated uh, beside the uh, Agora. Uh, when the city developed on the main man, mainland, those carved tombs had ceased to be built, but they didn't cease to be used as they were family tombs and so they were still in use for a certain time. Uh, and funerary moments uh, spread along the road uh, leading to the nearby co city of Coricos to the west and to the road on the road linking Elayusa to Canite Lais, which is another site um, a few kilometers uh, east of the, of the city. And uh, we know by the way, that the latter, I mean, Canitelles, was a dependent community uh, of Elayusa because we found some funeral inscriptions saying that fines that were due to pay uh, to be paid in case of violation of the burials should be paid to uh, Elayusa sanctuaries. And by the way, the necropolis of Elayusa is made of several uh, very monumental tombs that are a kind of landmark landmark of the of the city. Uh, now we know through the inscriptions that we have, uh, of course, several temple buildings in the city, but up to today. Uh, we just found one of the temples which is built on the southern limit of the city and it too was transformed into a church uh, in uh, early Byzantine, late Roman and early Byzantine times. And this too is a landmark of the of the territory because an earthquake shaked the the, the column columns and 
one piece of them remained uh, on the top of the part of the column that uh, was not damaged by the earthquake. And this is a magnificent uh, site. Uh, on the promontory, we have only scanty remains of the Hellenistic and early Roman phase of the city, a huge thermal building uh, looking at the northern harbour basin, uh, which in turn was embellished by a um, colonnaded street as many other harbours in the same region. And we have also some traces of the city walls. But the most represented on that um, part of the of the ancient site is that of the late Roman and early Byzantine times. Uh, those this period is represented by a kind of palace. It, it has been defined uh, in that way, uh, which is built um, around the central court. Um, and <clears throat> we found a lot of uh, architectural decoration that suggests that um, this building was a very rich and huge one, and it's a, it had been interpreted as a residence for a late Roman governor or, or early Byzantine governor. Um, the other Mm, sectors of the towns on the promontory are, are uh, another small church, a residential and productive quarter uh, looking to the southern harbor, harbor and there a, a huge kiln for the produ production of late Roman one uh, amphoras, which is one of the uh, models of transport amphoras uh, most uh, famous in the Mediterranean uh, between the 4th and the 7th century AD uh, CE has been uh, brought to light. Uh, this part of the city, this sector of the city is absolutely interesting for us from a historical and archaeological point of view but this area is not fully excavated. This is due in part to administrative reasons uh, dealing with the property of the estates, but uh, there is also another reason that uh, stops us from excavating uh, because the sandy dune with emerging monuments is uh, an environment that we want to preserve. The, the coast around El Ayusa is fully built. There are hotels, uh, even very huge, and houses, and it's really... Um, the, the natural environment is not preserved at all. So this is a small oasis of uh, beauty uh, in a very intensively built uh, region as you can see. Uh, now, if we look at the history of El Ayusa, sources are very scarce, uh, and um, but almost all of the sources are uh, testified by, by coin production. Um, for example, we know that Elayusa has been a Seleucid regal mint because we have one issue represented by one unique tetragram bearing the portrait of Seleucus VI portrait on the obverse and a female deity uh, on the reverse with the epithets and titles of, of the king. This same uh, reverse type is used on autonomous tetradrachms on the legend. They specify that they are issued as, at Elayusa. And so we know that Elayusa was already in place uh, at the beginning of the, fifth, uh, of the first century BC. Uh, the reign of Seleucus is dated between 96 and 94 BC. 
then we know that it was given to Archelaus of Cappadocia uh, by Augustus and uh, Archelaus decided to change the name of the city into Sebaste and this uh, issue is testified by the coins as well because some coins bearing the head of Nike of uh, Tike on the obverse and uh, Nike uh, uh, holding a wreath on the reverse uh, are issued both with the old name city's names Elaiusion and then with the new name Sebastin Sebastenon. So the names change is testified by the um, by the coins and uh, we know from literary sources that uh, Archelaus made Elaiusa one of his regal sieges as in Elaiusa he said to have received uh, the sons of uh, Herod uh, who were coming back to the east from from Rome so Elaiusa, though in for some to some extent insignificant was however uh, a regal res residence uh, under Archelaus of Cappadocia um, afterwards the city became uh, uh, one of the possessions of Antiochus IV of, Comag of Cappadocia and uh, he too, who ruled from 38 to 72 current era, he too made Elaiusa one of his residences, and he struck coins in different cities in the in the area, comprising uh, Elaiusa uh, Sebaste, and the coins were struck in his name and in the name of uh, his wife Iotape. Um, as you can see here. Now, Elaiusa had uh, civic issues of bronze mainly. Those bear the, the legend Elaiusion or Elaiusion with two or one sigma, but this unfortunately doesn't help us to um more sharply date those uh, those uh, productions um and but of course we know that those coins were struck probably before the coming of Archelaus of Cappadocia uh on the obverse of the coins we have uh diademed or wetted wetted head of Zeus and on the reverse a Nike holding crown. Uh, there is also half a unit uh, with the head of Tike on the obverse and Hermes on the reverse. And what is strange is that the same type is used for the unit, uh, bronze unit at the nearby city of Coricos. So uh, this means that this suggests that, that there will be a net between uh, civic coin issues of uh, different cities in the close micro region. We also know some double units bearing the head of Athena and the same goddess we saw on the Tetragrachus of Seleucus uh, VI and on the autonomous uh, Tetragrachus. Um, and you probably noticed that uh, on the coins, uh, besides the legend, there are contour marks appearing, and uh, those contour marks uh, are shared both with the neighboring cities and also to the Seleucid. Uh, issue, regal issues. Uh, so we could imagine that there was also a net that was controlling civic production, uh, foreseeing um, a coordinated production between cities, but under Seleucid uh, rule.
the <clears throat> now we come to try to date the autonomous stated vacuums production uh, as the type of the goddess who who seems to be the type uh, a civic type because it's reproduced also on autonomous coins is never used by uh, Seleucid kings uh, before uh, Seleucus the sixth in Elaiusa or elsewhere by Seleucid kings. So I imagine that this could be a civic type that was used by Seleucus in order to grant some uh, acknowledgments to, to Elaiusa. And so Seleucus used a, a civic type instead of, of imposing um, uh, a regal one. So I, I imagine that the civic type was already in place when Seleucus started its very, very episodic uh, issue in, in Elaiusa. And we wonder why <clears throat> uh, Seleucus occasionally used uh, the mint of Elaiusa uh, for a uh, regal issue uh, when there was a very prolific mint very nearby, which was the one of uh, Seleucia on the Calicadnos. Um, I imagine that he was in need for granting some uh, proudness to that city in the period of the Seleucid dissolution. So uh, giving uh, uh, visibility to, to uh, useful for him to uh, control uh, control power. This is also um, a cons this concerns as well the symbol that appears in the field on autonomous tetradrachms, which is an aflaston, uh, a plustre, um, a marine uh, vegetable. Uh, that symbol Unlike other civic symbols, like, for example, a uh, five-leaf plant, which is used at uh, Seleucia de Calicatnos, is not unique at Elaiusa. We find it elsewhere in other cities uh, of the eastern Mediterranean and the Greek world for a very long period of time, because the Aflaston is linked to naval victories. And I wonder if the that symbol uh, relating to naval victories was used at Elaiusa because Elaiusa was participating in the support of the fleet of the Seleucids in that period, as the same symbol of the Aflaston is also find, found on coins of Sidon on the Syrian shore. So we probably could imagine that there was a network of harbor cities that uh, supported the activities, the military activities of the Seleucid fleets. And uh, that is why the symbol is shared by, uh, by several, uh, several cities. But by the way, it is quite frustrating to recognize that there is an absolute vagueness of Elagiusa's coins, images and symbols and control marks, and you cannot build a system uh, based on those details. Then, uh, in Augustan times, under the rule of Archelaus, uh, we have those uh, units re with um, uh, double double name, uh, both Elaiusion and Sebastinos, Sebastinon, and this marks the uh, stop of the old uh, old name of the city, which was a very which had roots in uh, pre-Greek uh, languages, 
and may suggest that this was already a harbor in uh, Mycenaean uh, pre-Greek uh, colonization um, uh, commercial routes involving the Levant. And, um, but also with, with Archelaus, we don't have the replacing of Archelaus proper types because the types remain the, the ones that were used by the uh, civic mint. Only Antiochus of Comagene uh, uses for his coins um, what we could call dynastic types uh, representing his portrait and the portrait of himself or of his wife on, on the coins. Then uh, Elayusa has a production of what we call Roman provincial time, including the Roman, uh, the, the so-called pseudo-autonomous uh, issues that, as you see, uh, bear the name of the city or the epithets of the city, but we have no ruler uh, depicted on, no Roman uh, emperor depicted on them, Instead, it is introducing types that has have nothing to do with Elayusa, like, for example, the Heracles Club, which is a type for Tars Tarsus, or a mummy statue uh, that is not something that has to do with Elayusa as far as we know. And then Roman provincial types are uh, struck um, I would say in a irregular output, as we don't have them for all the emperors. Uh, and on those types, we can see that we switch between local types that were already used in the past, and then the introduction of new types that have nothing to do with the civic imagery. So, for example, the Nike is a type of Elayusa from the start, uh, but uh, Athena uh, armed with probably a Nike on uh, her extended arm was a type of Celesia, but was not the type of Elayusa Sebaste. However, all those coins, provincial coins that can be beautiful or not, are struck in... Uh, uh, all along the imperial, imperial period, up to the reign of Valerian and Gallienus, which marks the end of the Roman provincial coin. So um, the, the mint is active uh, until the end of the Roman provincial mint. Um, and on those issues, the um, attention is paid on the epithets of the city who is named Hiera, which means sacred, Asilos, which means with the right of uh, um, um, Asilia, uh, I mean, if you were caught for pursued for, from the power, you could uh, have an asile in Elayusa. It is called Metropolis, which is the mother city, but we don't know mother city of what, and it's a, a Nawarkis, meaning tied, uh, linked to the to the fleet, and so on. So there is a matter of proud in the titles of the city, but there are no matters of proud expressed through the uh, coin types. And now <clears throat> I will talk a little about circulation. As you can, can see on the on the slide, uh, we have very few coins from uh, the period before the um, uh, said the official uh, foundation of the city. But however, uh, we um, we found some Ptolemaic Macedonian and uh, uh, Seleucid coins. Uh, it's important to notice that those coins 
early coins come from the promontory and we found them um, in the rocky bank where they flowed in uh, on the original core of the city. Um, but as the I would say the the life of Elayusa before uh, early imperial time is not very well known. We cannot associate those coins with monumental uh, uh, contexts, uh, and so we can only imagine that there was an attending of the site before it came to the news as a, a place that was known uh, everywhere. Um, However, we must imagine that as it was a regal siege for Archelaus and Antiochus, some uh, representative buildings must have been uh, in place in the city. What may have happened is that as the the, the promontory is uh, has a rocky uh, foundation, the subsequent transformations of the uh, a digitarian building w simply destroyed what's what what was in place before the new the new buildings. Um, as you see, the besides the early attending of the site, we have some civic issues that have been found in the city as and it's really expected the the core is represented by uh, the local uh, local issues together with the ones of either the uh, nearby uh, towns either the most prolific mints of the region for example tarsus is well represented on that uh, on that graph, um, what must be said is that yes, of course, coins represent the can may represent activities on the on the site, but they also can represent the change of destination of of an area. So the fillings. Of previous, structure, of previous structures are the base for the construction of new ones. So for uh, certain periods, we just have a, a number of coins, but we cannot really say what they were doing there if they pertain to commercial activities or uh, private hoarding or whatever. Um, yeah, also Roman provincial coins are quite well represented with, of course, a uh, high percentage of local coins uh, that have been found on the site. And But you see that for the most part, except the one from uh, Sebastopolis, they all come from, uh, from the region. And those coins represent the bulk of what was circulating uh, up to well into the Roman imperial times. Um, Roman bronzes hardly uh, reach uh, such distant regions uh, from Rome. The normally the metal circulating is the precious metal, but of course on excavations you hardly find uh, pressure metal issues until the moment when the Antoninianus and uh, the, his successors are, are are struck. So of course until the well the into the third century BC we have not we don't have a lot of of roman coins as you see the curve raises only 
from the moment when Diocletian in, introduced the follies and this though being intended as a quite precious metal issue is enters into the cir the circulation um yes the as i said the um, most uh common coins that have been found in elayusa are the coins from Constantine's reform on. Those are very small bronze coins uh, whose name is I3 or I4, and uh, they weight more or less one gram, and they are broadly used in everyday economy. And the bulk of the circulation of those uh, late Roman coins is represented by a hoard that has been found in a cistern um, just close to the to the theater. They were contained in a, a late Roman one amphora, and the amount of pieces of metal that we found there was around 161. Uh, those were Constantinian coins up to the last Roman emperor of the Eastern Empire. Uh, some of the coins were halved, some of the coins were clipped, uh, so we have to imagine that they were used at their, for their metallic instead of their face value. But what surprised us was that the most recent coins in the hoard were not late Roman ones, but were first coins of the first Byzantine emperors. There was one of Anastasius and one of Justinian. So this hoard testifies that the small change uh, struck from the from Constantine the first on during the late Roman Empire was still in circulation under the first Byzantine emperors. And as far as um, higher denominations of the Byzantine emperors are uh, involved, I would say that the most represented emperor is Heraclius, who is a very prolific emperor from uh, the mint output point of view, but he is also the the one who was uh, on the throne when the collapse of the Eastern, uh, the, the Byzantine Empire in that region happened. And here too, we have a testimony from a horde that has been found concealed into a wall of a residential building. This horde was made of uh, falles, which means pieces of portinumi in the <clears throat> Uh, in the Byzantine uh, bronze system, and uh, uh, those uh, this this hoard has a early uh, specimen of focus. Then the bulk is uh, of uh, made of folles of Heraclius, but there are also a few specimens be, uh, struck by Constant the second, Constant the second. Uh, who followed Heraclius was probably <clears throat> the uh, the emperor that ruled during the final abandonment of the of the city. And afterwards, the city doesn't uh, show any traces of life until a very later period, when uh, a, a small core of uh, coins struck during the Crusaders period have been found in a small area. It was a thermal uh, building on the promontory. It had some remains of water supply. And in that small, small area, we found coins of Manuel II, Bohemond of Antioquia, Henry IV, and uh, the Armenian Kingdom of Cilicia. Uh, suggesting that 
in that small part of the city, crusaders used to stop during their travel to the uh, the uh, to the land route to the holy land. And that's it. Annalisa, thank you. Hello? That was wonderful. Um, always very interesting to have these sort of overviews of these uh, sites. And um, I, I was actually um, rather intrigued by the fact that you found a kiln for late Roman and for one types, um, having spent a great deal of my graduate career um, looking at those type of amphoras <laughs> and studying them, that uh, really piqued my interest. Um, you were like, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, but um, most mostly uh, LRA1 types that were found in shipwrecks. Um, my... uh, are there any questions from anybody? Don't be shy to answer. Let me see if there was anything in the chat. Um, actually, while I'm just checking the chat, I do have one question. What What is the museum that you uh, deposit the material in? Is it the one in Antalya? It's Mercy or... Museum. Mercy. Mercy. Yeah. It was newly built, you know, in the year of the museums in Turkey uh, a few years ago. Right. Uh, it, it has the chance to be a kind of site museum instead of a normal, you know, folk and history museum. Right. Uh, it has also very huge deposits, but I think that it has it has been built a little bit in a hurry because you know sometimes it happen uh, happens and uh, the deposit deposits are not always available. But I hope that in the future um, the materials that are uh, ho hosted in those um, depots. Uh, may be available for further studies, studies so on, so on. Right. Yeah, in fact, for, for those of you who don't know, um, typically the way it works in Turkey is that uh, there are regional museums, and um, those museums will then be the place where um, material from excavations are deposited depending on you know the, where the site is located and, and so forth and so in this case um, all that material then is deposited at this, um, this sort of regional museum in Mersin um, and I've in, in my own experience I've worked at the Bodrum Museum of Underwater Archaeology in uh, Bodrum Turkey which is where um, anything excavated from underwater shipwreck sites is, is deposited, or at least has been traditionally. Um, and in some cases, you know, there, there has been an attempt by our colleague in Antalya to coach University's Ahmed Center to try to publish the coins that are in these regional museums. And there have been um, a number of S and G Turkey uh, volumes. This is the Siloge Numorum Graecorum series uh, that has been ongoing for generations now. But um, uh, Professor Tekin at, um, at on, in Antalya has been very diligent, um, along with you know many of his colleagues and students, about trying to get as many of these regional uh, museum collections published. And in fact, um, Richard Ashton also uh, previously was quite instrumental in that as well, too. So, uh, <clears throat> Yes, I reply to the questions quickly. Uh, okay. First, uh, are there traces of the actual mint? Uh, actually, we found um, among the um, Inside the so-called Byzantine Palace, a small room where we found channels, small uh, furnaces, and scrapped metals, and maybe also blank flans. But it happened, um, I mean, the chronology of that uh, room is not clear. And I wonder whether this could be um, something that was related to the production of those late Roman 
bronzes, you know, that are very much debated because we don't know if they were all official issues of the emperor, emperor or there were also blanks uh, put in circulation. This would lead us to a very huge discussion, but this is uh, this could be a hypothesis, but the um, <clears throat> such structures cannot be dated uh, to the early, early periods. But as you saw in one of the first slides, you know, the, the, the city spreads onto like about 23 hectares and we didn't fully excavate the, it because it's, uh, it's impossible. And concerning the level of the sea, the, the city is not underwater, but we have on the edge of the promontory uh, some very, very, um, uh, the, 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 the structures finish with the end of the rocky bank. So we can imagine them, that some pieces of the promontory uh, fell into the sea. So we have tried to uh, perform some underwater research, but it is so expensive, and we just made uh, made one season of um, survey all around the promontory, and I hope that uh, my successors in the excavations direction will continue this uh, uh, this research because it was interesting. We found also cargoes. Uh, that uh, wrecked just mm, close to the coast. So it's an interesting thing to, to understand. But no, the city didn't go underwater. Uh, on the other side, what happened was that the sand invaded the mm, harbor basins. So at a certain time, at a certain time, besides political events such as uh, uh, Arabs invasions, the 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 harbors were no more useful for uh huge boats um uh, hosting and so this was probably uh an event that contributed to the end of the uh say performing life of the city uh quantum marks i i reply directly to Dan, uh, I'm studying the um, control mark system uh, of Elayusa since like 2004, more or less. But I, 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 it, I'm really frustrated because, for example, there is one recurring um, control mark which is uh, epsilon rho. And this control mark is the mark of an unknown Seleucid mint, which is very much earlier than what we know about the city. So I'm, I really don't dare to directly link the control marks to uh, the identification of uh, Elayusa's issues eventually before uh, Seleucid the, the sixth, or to identify through control marks issues, uh, issues that could pertain to Elayusa or not. Because there are some, uh, as I said, there is, a, there is a system sharing both types and control marks between uh, Selecia and the Caricadnos, Caricos, and De La Yusa. And uh, you know the um, idea of what happened in uh, Roman provincial issues with the uh, central mint producing for everybody and the sharing of dyes could also be a matter that happened before in the late Seleucid uh, uh, period, I don't know. But I'm studying and I hope I can publish a monograph on Elayusa's coins in, in a while. So all, at least I will ask the, the questions. I don't promise to give the answers, but I'm 
I'm thinking about that. Um, Daniel, yeah, are photos of the Tolima coins available? Yes, they are published in uh, Elayusa 1, which is the first volume. Um, and, and Eugenia Quini Schneider, who was the first director of the excavation, published in uh, I don't know, 99 or something like that. Uh, so you should search for uh, Eugenia Quini Schneider, Ela Yusa 1. Very good. Any other questions? Thank right. you. Well, Annalisa, uh, it, again, it was a really wonderful talk and really a pleasure to see you, at least virtually. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing you and Antalya in just a couple of weeks.